The People versus Ninja Turtles The Next Mutation. Let's rock. By 1996, the Ninja Turtles phenomenon had completely died out, and the iconic 1987 cartoon that kickstarted their insane popularity was finally given the axe after the 10th season. With the TV license now hanging in limbo, Haim Saban, the man behind Power Rangers, decided to take a crack at doing an adaptation of the Green Teens. His idea? Ninja Turtles The Next Mutation. A live action series that took the TMNT in some radical new directions. They were no longer teenagers, the Shredder was replaced by a new big bad, the Dragon Lord, and the biggest shakeup to the formula was the addition of Venus de Milo, a girl turtle with mystical powers. The series debuted less than one year after the cancellation of the 87 cartoon, and shortly after the completion of the first season, it was promptly cancelled, and the next mutation would go down as the single most vile entry to ever tarnish the turtle's name. And I'm not sure why. It's because Next Mutation killed TMNT, and we had to wait five years to get another series. Yeah, TMNT was dead long before then and its killer was Power Rangers. Next Mutation wasn't the final nail in the coffin, it was a last attempt to remain culturally relevant. Well how about the fact that it bombed so hard that it was cancelled after a single season? Okay, contrary to popular belief, this series was very successful, and Haim Saban did approach Eastman Laird for a renewal, but he wanted a bigger cut of the profits, and Eastman Laird told him, nope, because surely he wouldn't cancel a series this popular. Well, they were wrong and Saban walked. And this isn't conjecture. This is straight from Eastman's own mouth. Doesn't change the fact that it was goofy and retarded. True, Next Mutation is campy. It's very campy. With cartoony sound effects set to slapstick filled fight scenes, I mean this series went all out with the camp. But that was the show's intention, much like the old Adam West Batman. But that didn't stop people from hating it. Which is strange since the much beloved 87 cartoon was very campy, was filled with a lot of slapstick, and had a shredder that threw temper tantrums. But for some reason, that show was awesome, and Next Mutation was totally gay. Well, that's different! Next Mutation was live action! Yeah, because the live action films were never campy. Nope, not a single bit of camp to be found there. They played those straight. Well, how about when they got rid of the Shredder at the very beginning? You mean like the original Mirage comic? Uh, no. Well, how about the shitty new villains? What, Dragon Lord? He was a total badass. He wanted to eat the turtles and gain their mutation. What about the rest of them? Well, Dr. Queeze was kind of a generic mad scientist, but there was also the Chinese vampire Van Mi, Silver, a yeti that dressed and talked like a 1920s style gangster, and a psychopathic big game hunter named Simon Bonesteel, who was played by legendary voice actor Scott McNeil. That sounds pretty metal to me. Uh, um... And while I'm on the topic of voice actors, all of the show's vocal talent was provided by the cast at Ocean Group, who totally did the turtles some justice. Well, how about the retarded Turtle Hummer? Yeah, cause that's so much more retarded than the party wagon or the battle shell. Well, how about the fact that they're not brothers anymore? Well, yeah, Leo does say... We're not brothers. As in they're not blood related. Splinter still calls them his sons, and Leo does say... We're family. So I don't see a problem with this. Well, Peter Laird still hates it. Alright, this is true. Turtles co-creator Peter Laird completely disavows the series. Though, this doesn't seem to have anything to do with the show itself and just Venus. Or to be more accurate, Venus' gender. Because he was completely against the idea of a girl turtle. Now, this is only an assumption, since Laird has said very little on the topic, so I could be wrong, and he may actually just hate the series. But even so, that's just one person's stance. Yeah, Peter Laird's stance! And Venus sucked too! She was just a token girl character that they threw in. Yeah, I've never understood the Venus is a token girl character stance. Her personality isn't that of a girl stereotype. She's not about shopping or boys. And she's not just a girl carbon copy of one of the guys. She's a little like Splinter in that she's very spiritual and meditative, but being younger, she's more emotional and more prone to getting into trouble. Venus is her own unique character. What about her being a total Mary Sue that steals the show from the other turtles? One, no she isn't. She's not some specialized, idealized character. She has her own special skills, along with her own personal strengths and weaknesses. And two, no she doesn't. Past helping save Splinter in Episode 3, Venus gets thrown to the shuffle with the main four, and is treated like the rest of the team. 
The only other episodes where she plays a major role is The Staff of Bukai, The Good Dragon, and Who Needs Her. And that last one was a shitty recap episode. Even with all the new elements added to it, the series does a pretty good job of balancing its cast. Yeah, well how about- Hold up, I'm not done talking yet. In my review for the first movie, I said the interactions between the characters is where the writing was its strongest. And that's something Next Mutation gets right. One of the high points in the series is seeing the guys interact with each other and how they deal with Venus. Especially Donatello who outright rejects her spiritual powers. Being a staunch skeptic, he believes that there is a scientific explanation behind her abilities. And this causes a confliction between the two that puts them at odds more than anyone else. And I think that's a very logical and very interesting development for Donatello's character. Can, can I talk now? No, I'm done with you. Hey! Now this show is far from great. Since Expectation lacks movie budget, the Turtles costumes definitely aren't on par with Jim Henson. And there are some noticeable oddities, like the cuts underneath the Turtles bandana so the actors can see, the separation of the animatronic mask from the rest of the suit, as well as the animatronic heads being switched with masks with preset facial expressions for the stunts. And these were all things that were done in the movies, but they were hidden a lot better there. Though I will say that the mouths are very articulate and are far more expressive than their movie counterparts. And I'll take Next Mutation's turtle suits over the flat-jawed animatronics of 3 any day. Now there's also some issues with continuity. It seems to be set in the movie's timeline, since Shredder's face is scarred, Splinter's missing part of his ear, and the turtles live in the subway station from 2 and 3. But then there's these conflictions that aren't explained, like how Shredder's alive and not Super Shredder, and where the hell Casey and April are. Though these technically aren't any worse than the inconsistencies that TMNT had. So yeah, Ninja Turtles Next Mutation is not some horrible crime against turtles and it's certainly not without its merits. So why is the series hated so passionately while the 87 cartoon gets a free pass? Nostalgia. I hate to say it, but that's probably it. Even though a lot of kids stopped watching the 87 TMNT cartoon long before it was cancelled, they still held those childhood memories close. Where Next Mutation was this odd series that they discovered later on, and without the nostalgia goggles they probably viewed it as just not mature enough. Now I'm not saying that everyone should like Next Mutation. Something this campy is very niche. And if you hate it, that's fine. But that doesn't mean it's terrible. And if you feel the need to rip it a new one, try not to be a hypocrite and accuse it of things that other iterations of TMNT are just as guilty of. So what do you guys think of Next Mutation? Is it the horrible abomination that everyone claims it is? Or is it more of an underrated gem that should be more appreciated within the fandom? Or maybe you just never even heard of it until today. Let me know in the comments, and I'll see you guys later.